Welcome to today's webinar presentation of Advocacy 101, our 2018 Speak Out Day prep webinar. My name is Carly Wright, and I am the Director of Public Policy and Advocacy for Shape America, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. First, Let's go ahead and make sure that your audio is working properly. Be sure you have the correct audio mode selected on your GoToWebinar control panel located on the right of your screen. Select Use Telephone if you'll be calling in or use Mic and Speakers if you'll be listening through your computer. Due to the large number of participants for this session, your phone and or microphone have been muted. If you need technical assistance throughout the webinar, make sure you write this number down and call 1-800-263-6317. Make sure you keep this number in front of you in case you encounter any problems along the way. During our webinar, if you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and type them in the question box that's located on the bottom of your GoToWebinar control panel on the right of your screen. We will collect all of your questions throughout the presentation and answer as many as possible during the question and answer session near the end of the webinar. This webinar will be recorded and archived on our Shape America Online Institute. Instructions to access the recording of the webinar will be emailed to you. Now, I'd like to introduce our other speaker for today's webinar, Karen Johnson. Hi, Karen. Hi, Carly. Hi, everyone. Is everyone excited for Speak Out Day? I know I am. We're excited. Karen is our advocacy consultant for Shape America. Those of you who've been to Speak Out Day before have had the pleasure of meeting her. And um, again this year, Karen and I will be conducting an in-depth briefing for you on the specific issues we'll be addressing on Capitol Hill, um, as well as the current state of play, prepare you for any pushback, uh, provide you with meeting schedules and materials on February 13th when you're here. But today we'll be covering basic advocacy training and tips. So with that, we will go ahead and get started. As many of you know, 50 Million Strong by 2029 is Shape America's commitment to prepare all children to lead healthy and active lives through effective health and physical education programs. Um, this is our commitment and our goal as an organization. Um, and, and we know that key to our success of our 50 Million Strong goals is continued strong advocacy efforts at all levels. So really engaging in Speak Out Day, um, and having those really high impact meetings on Capitol Hill are, are really critical to uh, shape America's goals and success. So speaking of going to Capitol Hill, let's talk a little bit about what is advocacy and what is lobbying. Advocacy is really synonymous with education. Um, when you're advocating, you're conveying your opinion about something, you're educating someone um, about a specific issue, maybe about the importance of health and physical education, and um, conveying how important those subjects are for students to participate in and why they should be happening in schools. When you're lobbying, you're asking someone uh, whether it be a member of Congress when we're on Capitol Hill, or perhaps someone even in your state legislature around a state policy issue, to support or maybe even oppose a specific issue and piece of legislation. Um, so we believe, as Shape America, that it's important to do both. Uh, we understand the value of both educating the public as well as uh, decision makers and lawmakers about the importance of health education and physical education, and then, of course, uh, making sure that we're active in lobbying on those specific issues right now around the Every Student Succeeds Act um, that really do impact health and physical education funding and, and support for schools. So with that, we'll go ahead and run our first poll here. Have you ever lobbied before? Um, we have a couple options for answers here. Yes. You have lobbied before on Capitol Hill. Um, yes, you have lobbied on the state or local level. Again, maybe to your state legislature um, or you know local level policymakers, decision makers. Or no, you have not yet, but you will be very soon uh, when you come to Capitol Hill for Speak Out Day. I'm going to go ahead and launch our poll. 
You should see that on your screen now, so if you can go ahead and select your response. Just a few more seconds here for vote. All right, we'll go ahead and close our poll and share our results. So it looks like we have had a pretty interesting split here. So 58% of you all say yes, you have lobbied before on Capitol Hill, 8% yes on the state and local level, and 33% not yet. Um, well, that's great news for all of us. Looks like we have some, some great Speak Out Day veterans um, and some newbies who will be able to learn from those vets who've been on Capitol Hill before um, and have a really uh, exciting new experience on the Hill. So we're looking forward to having all of you. Um, and every year uh, it is different and a new experience, even if you have been before. Um, you all obviously know the value of that um, of coming back every year and developing those relationships over time um, so that they expect us there in our bright neon sneakers every year on Capitol Hill um, so that we make sure our voices are heard. All right, here you can see the picture of our, uh, of our Speak Out Day crew from last year. So, all right. All right. Go ahead, all right. So, thanks for that. Um, so why should we advocate and lobby? You know, that, that's a really good question, and I'll answer it this way. If Shape America didn't start with their Speak Out Day and start advocating on behalf of physical education and health education a decade ago, we would not be having this conversation today because health and PE would not have been part of federal education law. And we know that the evidence is there and the data is there that shows that when kids have a strong physical education program and a strong health program, they have better academic success and they live more healthy and productive lives. You all know it, so part of what we're going to be doing on Speak Out Day is sharing personal stories. You know, you've got the photo of our Tennessee folks with Senator Lamar Alexander, we told personal stories to him and his staff so many times about the impact that health and physical education had on Tennessee that there was no way he wasn't going to include health and PE and ESSA. But the stakes continue to be high for us and the potential is really too great. We're going to talk a lot about funding during this um, next 45 minutes or so and a lot during speak out day. Because while things have been authorized, that means while things have been put into um, federal education law, we still have to make sure that the funding's there for us. And finally, if we don't ask for it, who will? We really have to come to Capitol Hill and it's our job to speak out on behalf of other educators, on behalf of parents, and most importantly, about uh, on behalf of the, the students that we serve every day. All right, so as we're heading to Capitol Hill, we need to, to be able to identify what is the problem that we're trying to fix? Why are we there? Um, and, really, and really frame that problem um, for members of Congress and staffers as we head to Capitol Hill. Um, so as all of you know, uh, when No Child Left Behind was passed, uh, we definitely felt the effects of those unintended consequences of the legislation and the, the strict focus on, you know, those testing mandates and core academic subjects. And, uh, you know, we saw that effect on health and physical education programs, on programs being cut, on teacher positions being cut, funding being cut for health and physical education. So, um, you know, that's why we've been advocating for the past 10 years or so to ensure that as the Elementary and Secondary Education Act was being reauthorized into now what we know as the Every Student Succeeds Act, that health and physical education were represented so that we wouldn't be facing these same issues again. We were also aware that when ESSA passed, that really wasn't going to solve all of our problems. 
It was really just going to put us on a level playing field and give us a place to start um, to really build on our advocacy efforts from there. Um, so we know that we're still facing those, those budget shortfalls in many states and school districts, and we're still trying to build back up those health and physical education programs to be strong, um, and that there aren't as many opportunities um, and quality programs out in schools as there should be. Um, as Karen mentioned, we know uh, that there's so much data and research that shows the importance and the impact that health education and physical education have on students. Um, have on school communities. Uh, you know, we know the research shows the impact on academic achievement, the impact on student behavior, um, dealing with, with things like stress and bullying in schools. Um, if we're able to equip students with the skills that they need to be able to deal with those kinds of issues, they'll be more successful, um, not only in school, but in life as well. Um, and many of you have probably heard uh, a lot about um, the opioid crisis that many of our states are facing right now. It's really been a hot topic on Capitol Hill as well as across the country. Um, and Congress is looking at ways specifically to address that and what they can do um, you know, a around dealing with regulations with, with drugs and, and therapy and things like that. But we know how important that prevention education is, not just around opioids, but around all kinds of um, you know, uh, all kinds of behaviors that students can be engaging in and that that prevention education is really critical and that it's delivered through health education and physical education. So we want to be able to start thinking about these messages and how um, and what is going to resonate most with members of Congress and make sure that they understand what a skills-based health education program looks like and what an effective physical education program really looks like in schools and how it impacts our students. All right, so we have one more poll question here for you. Before we really start digging into our current federal education legislation, the Every Student Succeeds Act, I'd like to get an idea of your familiarity with this law. So we're gonna run a poll about how familiar you are with ESSA and specifically how it can impact health and physical education programs. Are you very familiar? Uh, you're a seasoned advocate and you've engaged in the ESSA planning pro process at either the national, state, or local level. You're somewhat familiar. You've read some resources and material to educate yourself. You're a little bit familiar. You've heard about it, but have not been actively engaged. Or you have no idea what I'm talking about and what ESSA even is, um, which is fine because you will get uh, more information than you knew you wanted from, from us um, because this is really, really our, our critical hot topic here. Um, so we'll go ahead and launch the poll. Go ahead and submit your vote. We'll do just a few more seconds to get your votes in. All right. Close our poll and let's take a look at our results here. Um, so 33% of us very familiar with ESSA and have participated in Speak Out Day or in some form in the ESSA planning process. 50% um, somewhat familiar, 8% uh, a little bit familiar, and 8% what is ESSA? So that's a pretty good, um, a pretty good distribution here. Um, and I think that even if you are incredibly familiar with ESSA already, um, every, every day there's something new. <laughs> um, you know, we know the U.S. Department of Education is working to get, provide feedback and um, approve state plans right now. Um, there's a lot happening, as Karen mentioned, about appropriations. Um, and, and again, we need to be continuing to engage in this process as, as it continues to evolve. And for those of you that aren't as familiar, we will make sure that you have all the background that you need um, to make sure that we can be effective advocates on Capitol Hill on Valentine's Day, February 14th. All right, so let's move along here. Well, I think this is gonna be a great way to spend Valentine's Day, Carly. I agree. Find, find those red running shoes. That's right. 
So part of what we need to do in preparation for Speak Out Day is to identify the problem and then how we as members of Shape America can help address the problem. And when you go to Capitol Hill, those of you, I believe it was 58% of you who've been on the Hill before, I think you'll agree that when you go down and you, you sit with a member of Congress or you speak with a member of Congress's staff, they really want to know what's happening in your school, in your school district, in their congressional district, in your state. So one of the things that they're going to be interested in is if ESSA is being implemented effectively. One of the things that ESSA did was remove power from the US Department of Education and place it in the hands of states, districts, and schools. Um, members and their staff will be very interested in whether or not that's happening. You know, to dovetail that, it's our states and districts following the intent of ESSA. Again, removing the power from the federal government and placing it in the hands of states, schools, and school districts. I mean, what we're able to do during Speak Out Day is really help educate members of Congress and their staff on what is happening in their hometown, in their home state, in their congressional district. And then also being able to take information back to our school districts and our schools. And what are those opportunities for health and physical education within ESSA? So keeping that in mind, as you prepare your message, um, you got to know the issue and why you're there, right? You're there on behalf of Shape America. And Shape America has been going to the Hill again for what, Carly, nearly a decade we've been doing this? Yes, this will be our 11th Speak Out Day. So Shape America has a very strong voice when it comes to health and physical education. And also, um, it has a strong voice in what our nation's students need in terms of ongoing life skills, ongoing wellness. So we're the experts when we go into those offices. So feel free to share state-specific background on, um, on what your state is doing with health and physical education and any links to your state's ESSA plan. We've had some states um, some Shape America advocates at the state level that have worked really hard, so health and PE are both included in their state plans. Those of you who've attended previous Speak Out Days, you know that that was part of what we were advocating for and working towards um, a couple years ago. And share personal stories about the students in your school. You know, Carly mentioned that one of the things that we're trying to change is that there are fewer opportunities for health and PE in our schools. What, these, what this lack of funding means to our programs. But also share some positive stories about the academic, um, the impact of academic achievement through health and physical education and a, a, a more positive lifestyle for the students. And then one thing that we cannot turn the TV on or open the paper or log in and see something about is the opioid crisis. You know, what Carly mentioned, it is not a big leap. Like we are prevention and we're on the front lines of prevention. So all of these great stories and all of these personal anecdotes about what's happening to students in those districts and states, I mean, it, it it ties back to why the funding is important. But more importantly, you all are gonna have to be prepared to be the educators to members of Congress and their staff on what's happening in your school and district and why health and PE are important in your school and district. Thanks, Karen. And you know, you'll know, you hear us say personal stories so many times over the course of this webinar and you know, if that's one thing you take out of it, it's to start thinking about those now. And that's why we do this webinar a few weeks ahead of time so that you're able to start thinking about, you know, what's happening in, in, your, in your school district, in your state, 
and, and what are those key personal stories that you can share? Because that's what's really memorable um, and that are, you know, those stories are really going to make an impact on your members of Congress. Um, and, you know, hopefully that when they're home, they'll want to come visit your schools and, and take a look at these amazing programs that you all are supporting and running. And, you know, those are those messages and stories that Karen and I are able to tell people about when we're on Capitol Hill, but you're able to really bring them to life um, because you're the ones who are there delivering, delivering those programs and working with students every day. Um, so start, start thinking about um, what are those great stories that you have to share um, that will really be memorable and impactful for your members of Congress. Um, you know, in addition to what's going on back home, we need to remember that now in the Every Student Succeeds Act, physical education and health education are included. We have been included in the definition of a well-rounded education, making us eligible for that federal education funding under Title I for low-income schools, Title II for professional development for all school employees, and for Title IV. Uh, part A, which will really be our focus on Capitol Hill and ensuring that there's adequate funding available. Karen will talk a little bit about this later, but for both FY18 and FY19, we want to ensure that Title IV Part A, where there's a specific priority for health and physical education there, um, is actually funded at the authorized level that was written into ESSA of that 1.65 billion dollars. We want to ensure that states and school districts have access to as much funding as they need. In order for, you know, whatever programs states and school districts decide to deliver using all of their federal education funding, but especially their Title IV Part A funding, in order for those programs to really be impactful to schools and impactful to students, they need sufficient funding to, to, to really make, a, to make that impact. So, Again, it's that 10 years of advocacy um, on Capitol Hill. It's those previous speak out days that many of you have attended um, that are the reason that we're included in the Every Student Succeeds Act and the reason that we now are at the table and on a level playing field with these other subject areas um, and able to now try to garner additional funding and support moving forward. You know, I mentioned the well-rounded education definition that, that is now included in the Every Student Succeeds Act. So this definition and list of subjects replaces the core academic subject definition that was included in No Child Left Behind. Um, so just the change in that language from core academic subjects to a well-rounded education has really shifted the conversation in education overall to now um, having more of a focus on a whole child education. Uh, you'll see the list here of all the subjects that are included in well-rounded education, and that's a list of 18 subject areas. The exciting thing is that health and physical education are now included, uh, but the thing to keep in mind is when we're talking about a well-rounded education and all of the subject areas that now have access to funding, it's all 18 of these subject areas. So there is going to be strong competition in states and school districts for this funding and support, but there's also a really great opportunity for us to collaborate with other academic areas um, and really to provide a more coordinated approach to whole child education since we're now on a level playing field with these other subject areas. Thank you, Carly. So I, um, I actually love this next slide and love presenting on this next slide, understanding the process, because it allows me to walk down memory lane and the 11 years that we work to be included in federal education law. Um, and many of you were part of that 11 year journey. So ESSA, just a reminder for everyone, and um, maybe a little new information for others, ESSA is the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which became law in 1965. And then it was reauthorized, and the last time that it was reauthorized was the now infamous No Child Left Behind. And Carly referenced No Child Left Behind and how being left out of 
that definition of core academic subjects really hurt physical education and health education and actually had a incredibly detrimental effect on our nation's children. So we went about trying to insert language in ESSA that, or this new federal education law that would do a couple things. At first, those of you who have been with us for a while, you'll remember that we had a few asks going to Capitol Hill. One was to be included in that definition of core academic subjects, and the other was to protect the PEP program, which was an authorized program under No Child Left Behind. So we had, you might remember this, a bill called the Physical Act that was introduced in two Congresses. Um, we couldn't find a House sponsor the first time. We only had a Senate sponsor. Then we finally got a House sponsor. So you all might remember going up to the Hill and advocating on behalf of the Physical Act and how that language shrank over the years to where all we wanted was to be included in the definition definition of core academic subjects. We had to go up and advocate for a sponsor on the Senate side and then again on the House side and then we had to try to find um, Republicans because our two sponsors were Democrats. So the idea was that they would take that language and they would carry it to the committee. And then the committee was going to have a hearing and they would mark it up and they would either include the language or not include the language. So we went through that for a couple Congresses. And then finally, when um, ESSA was being marked up for the final time in 2015, Carly and I heard from the Hill that they were doing away with that term core academic subjects, but that they were replacing it with a, with a term called well-rounded and that well-rounded would do the same thing that core academic subjects was going to do, which was to allow the use of federal funds for anything included in that definition. So when we were on the, when we, they were marking up on the Senate side, we were actually included in the definition of well-rounded education, and the PEP program was still a standalone program. On the House side, we were part of the definition of a well-rounded education, but there was no PEP program. Then Chairman John Klein of Minnesota, he wanted to collapse all of the standalone programs like the PEP program into a new title. And that new title was Title IV Part A. And organizations like ours were asked by the main um, authors of the bill to go along with it and we were promised that there'd be 1.65 billion dollars to cover all of the programs that have been consolidated into title for part a so we wrote letters in support of it we called offices in support of it the house and the senate conferenced this bill because the house had one version the senate had the other version they took one, they made all their changes, and one of the changes was Title IV, Part A. Then there was a floor vote from both the House and the Senate, and ESSA was passed in December of 2015. Well, even though the bill was passed in December of 2015, they still had to appropriate money because this was all the language that authorized the law. It didn't appropriate any funds to the law. And that's a really important thing. We, our, um, our victory was short-lived because as soon as the law was passed, we all had to get to work to ensure that that $1.65 billion was going to be appropriated for this great new title. So the HELP Committee, well, actually, the HELP Committee is the authorizing committee, and then Labor HHS is the appropriations committee that funds programs that the HELP Committee in the Senate and the Education and Workforce Committee in the House pass. Rarely do we meet with members of those committees. Instead, we meet with the staff. And the staff meet with organizations like ours, and then they take the recommendations to the members of those committees. So it's really important to know if you're meeting with an appropriator 
or if you're meeting with an authorizer. So on the know who you're visiting, prior, prior to the meeting, please, please know that individual's party. I'm not telling tales out of school when I tell you that things are highly polarized on Capitol Hill these days. Um, know that individual's interest. You know, maybe they're a marathon runner. Maybe their son or daughter um, participates in sports. Maybe they're a doctor. I mean, find out what their interests and their background are. And then um, their position on our issues. Um, every committee has um, a chairman and a ranking member and then it's broken into subcommittees. So it's important to know if the staff or the member that you're meeting with is the chairman of a committee, a ranking member of the committee, what subcommittee they're on. So um, there might be a tie back to health, there might be a tie back to education somehow, there might be a tie back to children. You, it's important to know what committees they serve on. And then why should this person listen to you? We talked about this earlier. You know, you're the expert coming in. Nobody knows more about health and physical education in your school, in your district, in your state than you do. And you're really bringing a lot of information to Capitol Hill when it comes to real-time knowledge and real-time information about health and physical education, the, the state of your district or your state's children, the state of education. I mean, please keep in mind that you have information that they want. So I joked about it a little bit before about how polarized things were on Capitol Hill. And if you turned on the news over the past few days, you'll know that we had um, a government shutdown. It lasted three days. And there was a compromise to fund the government through February 8th. So what that means is that we still don't have a funding bill passed. We're working on what's called a continuing resolution. So a continuing resolution allows for the government to fund based on the previous fiscal year's funding levels. So there's no new money. There's, there's no money taken away. Everything is status quo. So for some of the things that we're interested in, like Title II, Title I funding, that's great because we know that that funding is going to remain level at least through February 8th. But for Title IV Part A, which is a new program, things are still up in the air a little bit. So that'll stay at the 2017 um, $400 million level, but we're, we're hoping, well, we're hoping that that level is going to increase. So schools and school districts weren't really able to do much with that amount of money. So a CR for Title IV Part A isn't really helping us very much. So a few things are going to happen over the next few weeks. Um, on January 30th, the president is going to give his State of the Union address. The State of the Union is a blueprint of where this administration and previous administrations wants to go. So it lays out their legislative agenda, but also gives us a peek into their funding agenda. Um, that'll be our first glimpse into the budget. All right, so then on February 8th is when the CR is supposed to end and we're supposed to get um, a budget for fiscal year 18. There's a very good chance that when we meet for speak out day that we'll be on another continuing resolution that this short-term CR is not going to be resolved. So keep that in mind. Then the other thing that I want to mention is that on February 12th at the earliest and possibly it'll be later that week, it could even be on Valentine's Day, but the president is going to announce his budget. So I'm saying all of this to let you know that we're going to be working in real time on Capitol Hill on February 14th and quite possibly be reacting to a lot of new information 
and a lot of new numbers. Now with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about where we are on 2018 and 2019 funding. So as I said, 2018, it's very, very likely that we're going to remain on a continuing resolution. Again, making the funding for Title IV-A you know, really less than adequate and at best unclear. Um, last year, the administration proposed eliminating or reducing um, many titles within ESSA. Title II Part A, which is all the professional development was zeroed out uh, in the president's budget and zeroed out by the House. And then Title IV Part A was sort of overlooked in the president's budget and then it was zeroed out um, by the House and then the administration realized that, that they had been remiss in not eliminating it and then decided that they wanted to eliminate it as well. So that's kind of a roadmap for what we're looking at for 2019. I mean, this is very likely to happen again where the president's proposal will eliminate or, you know, reduce as a best case scenario, Title IIA, Title IVA. Now, one of the things that the, uh, that the House did, the House zeroed things out, but the Senate put funding back in. So the Senate put funding back in for Title II, and um, on Title IV Part A, um, increased it by $50 million. So now for fiscal year 2018, we're looking at likely $450 million to $500 million, which would be a $50 million or a five or a million or a hundred million dollar increase over 17. I know it gets really confusing. There's a lot of moving parts on this, and we'll go through everything, like I said, in real time on um, on the 13th. So when you look at the individuals who are making all these decisions um, in terms of funding on the House and Senate on the Appropriations Committee. You've got Roy Blunt from Missouri, who's chairman of Labor HHS Appropriations. So that's the appropriation subcommittee that oversees our funding. And then Patty Murray from Washington State is the ranking member. Tom Cole of Oklahoma is the chairman of Labor HHS on the House side. And then Rosa DeLauro from Connecticut is the ranking member on the House side. So these are the, again, these are the appropriators. These are the chairman and the ranking member who oversee the amount of funds that we get. They are supposed to find out, or they're supposed to follow the lead of the authorizer. So remember Title IV Part A was authorized at $1.65 billion initially, and then, um, then we saw a considerable reduction. But these are the individuals, Lamar Alexander of Tennessee, Patty Murray, seeing her name again from Washington State, Virginia Fox from North Carolina, and Bobby Scott from Virginia. These are the four individuals that when that bill was conferenced and the Senate agreed to take up the House's recommendation of folding all those programs into one new title, these are the individuals who were at the table that agreed initially Title IV Part A would be funded at $1.65 billion for its inaugural year, which was 2017. So what are the asks for Speak Out Day in terms of funding and tying back all of the stories and all of our needs? Our ask is pretty simple. It's to honor congressional intent and, and fund Title IV Part A at $1.6 billion for fiscal year 19. So the statute, I know that I'm going to get a question on this, so I'm going to address it now. The statute was that for fiscal year 2017, it would be, it would be authorized at 1.65, 
and then in subsequent years it goes down to 1.6 billion so that's why there's a, ch a drop from 1.65 to 1.6 our second ask is to maintain funding for title II part a that's all that professional development money that's something that we worked very very hard to get included in and that is why we were incredibly happy that we were part of that definition of well-rounded education and then finally part of our ask for speak out day is to make sure that you all provide lawmakers with an update on efforts to make sure that health and physical education are included not only in your state plans but how it's being implemented at the um, the state, the district, and the school level. I know that I know that was a lot of numbers, so I uh, I've, I'm more than happy to answer questions when we when we finish, Carly. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of moving pieces and parts right now. Uh, the good thing about that is that it's a great time for us to be on Capitol Hill, pleading our pleading our case and um, educating them about health and physical education and the need. For that funding um, so it's as, as good a time as ever for us to be there um, so as you're starting to prepare to come to Capitol Hill and thinking a little bit about these meetings that you'll be going into with either your members of Congress or their staff um, please know that we are going to be scheduling all of those meetings for you it's kind of a logistical nightmare so we do our best to um, work all of that out for you and do all of the meeting scheduling, making sure you have time to get from place to place and to get to lunch, um, as, as well as um, understanding, you know, where the Senate offices are versus the, the House of Representatives offices. Um, so we will provide you with your meeting schedule, as well as maps of Capitol Hill and all the buildings and a congressional directory when you arrive on February 13th. So you'll be able to map out your route um, and see when and where your meetings are. And you'll also have a congressional directory so that you'll be able to look up your members of Congress, um, find their office numbers if for some reason you're running late to a meeting um, or, or need to find a little bit more information about them, you'll have access to those when you're here on the 13th. So you want to make sure you know where you're headed and kind of have a plan to make sure um, your entire group gets to where you're going on time. Um, you do want to show up, you know, just a little bit early to that meeting. If you're able to go ahead and check in with them, let them know who you are and that you're with Shape America um, and be professional. You know, this is a, a business meeting for them. Um, so you, you want to make sure you're treating it as such as well. But be confident, you are there as the expert on health and physical education. You're there as their constituent and they wanna hear from you and know, know your thoughts on these issues because they are there to represent you. And again, um, Karen talked a little bit about the staff and how critical they really are to this process. Um, you know, getting a staff member on your side really helps us because they're able to become our biggest advocate to their boss about um, you know supporting health and physical education and funding for us and then always be positive you know you never know when you're walking in the door to a meeting um, whoever you're meeting with whether it be the member of congress or their or their staff um, you know what their feelings are about health and physical education they may be completely uninformed they may not have a great understanding of what health education and physical education look like today in, in your state, in your school district, um, or maybe they had a, a bad experience in the past. You know, I just was reading an article that's gonna be coming out in uh, a Jopard in April about some of our students that come from um, North Carolina. And they went into a meeting with a staff member and they could tell by her body language that she was just not interested in this meeting. And she expressed that she'd had a bad experience in physical education and was clearly not intending to be supportive. Um, and, and they were able to use that as a learning experience and to really talk about, um, you know, the programs that they're running down in North Carolina and how they're impacting students 
and they were able to really see the change over the course of that meeting um, in the way that they were able to educate that staff member about what's really happening today in health and physical education and, and how they're really engaging students in a very positive way now. Um, so think about those opportunities to really turn a negative if, if that presents itself into a positive. And if it's a member of Congress that has supported us previously, we want to thank them for their support and really appreciate what they've done for us. Uh, make sure if you have a business card, you're able to provide that so that they can follow up with you for anything. Um, you know, perhaps schedule uh, a visit to your school when they're home in their home offices. Again, you know, this, this is a, a professional meeting, so make sure um, that you are respectful of, of the staff or member of Congress that you're meeting with and, and try to gear things towards the positive. But also don't be odd. These, they're there to represent you and you are their constituent. And it's important that they hear from you um, about how you feel about these issues and why it is so critical and important for them to support uh, funding of these programs for your state and school district. Carly, those are great examples. Yeah, I thought they did a fabulous job of really turning that around and, and taking that as an opportunity to really educate that staffer and, you know, had a great conversation about how much now she loves to run and do marathons and things like that. And, you know, that there are now great running programs through um, schools and physical education, physical activity programs. And, and yeah, just used it as a great education experience. And I think we need to take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, I can remember when we first started this and we were constantly asked why the federal government was play, was paying for basketballs. Right. So right. We, had, we had to do a lot of education mm -hmm. about what what uh, effective health and physical education really looks like in schools these days. And turn around people's perception. That was a really great example. So, and it's a good segue into the next piece here because we can hit as many offices as you know shape america can schedule but it's not going to matter unless we follow up and we've been able to get some of our best work done through the follow-up so everyone will receive a um, a meeting report form uh, for every office so those need to be returned to carly or janae and what happens with those forms is we go through them and um, so we ask you to take copious notes, um, give us as much information as you can on those forms, because we'll read through them to see who we might be able to cultivate as an advocate. This battle is not going to end. So whether it is funding for Title II, funding for Title IV, um, you know, reauthorization, I hate to say it, but reauthorization of ESSA is going to be coming up again very soon. This bill was only reauthorized for four years. So we very well could, in the second half of this administration, start hearing conversations around the reauthorization of ESSA. So we want to identify those champions and continue to cultivate them as soon as we can. Uh, we'll ask that you'll send a thank you note or a thank you email to the staff person or member that you met with within a week. Offer to provide additional information, um, whether it's from the Shape America advocacy page, with which Carly and Janae have done an incredible job with, or if it's information about your school. Make sure you send any uh, additional information that you think will be helpful. Ask again, you know, if you didn't get a clear answer, if you didn't get a yes or no, you know, often you will hear, well, you know, I'll have to run this up the flagpole or I'll have to talk to my boss about it. We'll get back to you. Well, it's our job to get back to them. And then finally, one thing that we found to be really helpful, and it's why Carly was so smart and launched the Backyard Advocacy Kit, is uh, to schedule a follow-up meeting in their home office or ask the legislator or staff to come visit your school to see what a 2018 
health physical education program looks like? Absolutely. And speaking of our advocacy webpage, <clears throat> we have a brand new Shape America advocacy uh, micro site that is up and running on the website if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it. Um, it's pretty cool and anything related to advocacy now is all headquartered here, including our blogs that are on exchange, all of the ESSA tools, the state advocacy toolkits that we've put together, um, any late breaking important news that's happening, whether it's uh, news that's being announced by us here at Shape America or, or just out in the world. Um, as well as access to our action alerts to be able to reach out to your members of Congress about funding for Title IV Part A as well as Title II. So we have a lot of great background information available here for you to start taking a look at. We'll have a lot of great materials for you um, available when you're here on the 13th and 14th, but it doesn't hurt to start taking a look at some of these materials now um, so that you're, you're really feeling prepared and ready to go. When you're here during the prep session, you will have time to meet with other folks who are here from your state um, or whoever you may be attending meetings with on the 14th. So you have a chance to kind of talk through, you know, who's going to intro the meeting, who's going to deliver the leave behinds, who's going to make the ask, those different meeting roles, and really to be prepared to deliver those messages in a very short time frame. Um, we'll talk more about this when you're here, but you may be having meetings in the hallway or in a very tight space in in a you know in the lobby of their office or um, you know in a, in a conference room or something like that. So we want to really have our messages clear and concise to be able to deliver them in five minutes if we need to. Um, so if you have a chance to start taking a look at some of these tools and resources. Um, they're all here available for you, and we encourage you to do that. Just a, a couple other tips to start thinking about as well. Um, if you do have time between your meetings that we schedule for you, um, you can start thinking about stopping in to see other um, offices from your state, others, other members of Congress from your state. We will give you additional materials so that you're able to do those drop-ins. Um, sometimes, for one reason or another, we may not be able to get a meeting. With, with every member of Congress from your um, state or district. So um, again, please make plans to try to stop in between other meetings to visit them. You may be able to get an impromptu meeting as well. Um, and, and as we talked about, make sure you get to know your legislators ahead of time. Um, take a look at you know, where exactly they're from. Uh, maybe they have children who go to the school or in the school district where uh, where you work, uh, maybe they're former military, and we can share some of those. We'll be sharing some of those um, military readiness messages around the importance of being physically active and healthy as well. So start thinking about some of those things. And if you visit our Shape America Legislative Action Center, you can easily find who your members of Congress are and access to their websites uh, to, to start digging in to a little bit more information about them. So Karen talked about our sneakers before. Those of you who have been to Speak Out Day before know that um, when we go on Capitol Hill, you'll see everybody there in suits and their professional business attire. Um, but the way that we make sure we stand out when we're on Capitol Hill is to wear our bright neon sneakers on Capitol Hill with, with that business attire. Um, and, and we're recognizable because of this. You'll find that um, staffers and members of Congress will remember us because of this, and it really helps to reinforce our message of supporting and preparing students to be healthy and physically active for a lifetime. So yeah, as Karen mentioned, I'm going to see if I can find some red or pink shoes for Valentine's Day this year, um, but we do really encourage all of you um, to wear your sneakers um, on Capitol Hill um, again, just to help to reinforce our messages. So shout out to Colorado for coming up with this great idea a few years back. Um, and now we're all on board with, with the trend. And plus, it really helps with the fact that we have you running all over Capitol Hill for the day and you don't have to worry about wearing heels or, or uncomfortable shoes. You've got your sneakers on and you're ready to, ready to cover some territory on the hill. So I'll just quickly go through what to what to expect 
when you're here on the 13th and 14th. Um, we will be doing a prep session at the Holiday Inn in Old Town, um, where we have a room block secured and we will have a meeting room there for you. Um, so we will be doing our prep session from 1 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on the 13th. Um, and it's really important that you plan uh, your travel arrangements to be here in time for that, because um, that's where we'll really go into the deep dive on the opportunities within ESSA for health and physical education, what the current state of play is, um, talk really in depth about our asks on Capitol Hill, make sure you're prepared for any pushback you may receive um, or any, any messages um, that we've been hearing that you may uh, hear back to some of those asks. Um, you'll get all your materials, your meeting schedule, um, information about getting around, um, as well as, again, have the opportunity to role play and do some um, preparation um, with the other attendees that you'll be uh, heading to Capitol Hill with the next day. And then we'll be, again, back in Old Town Alexandria this year, which we're really thrilled and excited about. Um, and that is Karen's stomping grounds. And she knows that there are lots of great um, Lots of great places in the area to head to for dinner, which will be on your own as soon as we're done at 530. Um, so if you're looking for good recommendations, Karen's the lady to ask about that. <laughs> um, there's, email there's, me. Uh, yes, yes. There's lots of great places in the area. Um, and it's a, it's a really, really fun neighborhood to be in. So we're looking forward to it. Carly, we, should, then, start adding a, we should start adding a uh, restaurant slide to our pre-speak out day webinar. We should, we should. Yeah, so we've got some good reservations. Yeah, I know um, the Central District Conference is started today, and um, so a lot of our Central District folks are there doing some professional development, um, but they're pretty well known for coordinating a pretty big, a pretty big dinner that night um, for anybody who's interested, so you'll have a chance to chat with folks and get together to, to plan that. But um, then on the 14th, happy Valentine's Day, we'll be heading to the Hill. So we're, we're thrilled that you all plan to be our Valentine's this year. And we will have buses um, from the Holiday Inn that will take us uh, straight to Capitol Hill at 8 a.m. We'll be, again, scheduling those meetings for you between that 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. window on Capitol Hill. And then, um, for our lunch event, we're doing things a little bit different this year, and we're kind of excited about it. So we're taking advantage of the fact that it's Valentine's Day um, to partner with the American Heart Association and do a Jump Rope for Heart showcase on Capitol Hill this year. Um, so we will be having a jump rope competitive team of girls there um, who will be doing a demonstration in the Rayburn House Office Building foyer, which is a, a nice big space to really um, give them room to do a really cool performance. Um, and there will be a lot of audience participation. We're inviting a number of uh, our key champions from Capitol Hill um, to hopefully come and, and jump with the girls. And we encourage, of course, all of you to do the same. So we'll be doing that, that showcase. Um, We'll be delivering our Speak Out Day awards as well and um, having some cool stations and um, jump rope giveaways and things like that where you'll be able to record your own little videos um, to share our message over social media. And then right next to the foyer area, we'll have lunch available for you. And we'll have lunch available a little bit before and a little bit after. Um, that showcase event as well, so that if you're done with meetings early or have a little time afterwards, you'll be able to grab lunch um, in that room next door to the foyer whenever you have time to do so. It'll be there and, and ready and waiting for you to fuel up for your afternoon of meeting. And then at 3.30 p.m., we'll have buses that will depart for both National Airport and back to the Holiday Inn, depending on where you need to go. So it's a very busy, very productive two days, and we are so excited that it's just a few short weeks away. Um, so just a little bit more about our Jump Rope for Heart Showcase. Again, since it is Valentine's Day, since it is Heart Month, we thought this was the perfect time to work that into our messages and to talk about 
um, the importance of engaging in physical activity and, and, and leading a physically active lifestyle to combat heart disease down the road. Um, and American Heart Association is excited to partner on this with us. Um, so in advance of coming to Capitol Hill, um, and while we're there at the uh, showcase, you'll have a chance to record videos, but we're encouraging you to participate on social media ahead of time with our Jump for More Challenge. So we have some really cool graphics like the one you see on your screen available, available to be shared on social media. Um, hashtag Jump for More is what we're hoping to promote. Uh, we encourage you to do little videos with your students or yourself um, where you're jump roping four times to talk about the importance of health and physical education and funding more Title IV. So um, make sure you go ahead and head to social media to spread the word. And in addition to that, um, we want to invite uh, all, all of Congress to jump with us. So you'll be receiving an email from us early next week um, with a sample invitation to reach out to your members of Congress ahead of time about this. Uh, we'll shoot you the link to be able to access your member of Congress's website. Um, and then there's a scheduling link available through there where you can send this sample invitation um, that's included here, but that we'll also share with you via email um, so that you can reach out to them and hopefully we can have um, many staffers and many members of Congress join us for this really fun showcase event. Um, and hopefully participate in some jump roping themselves. So we'll be sharing, sharing that with you uh, early next week, but wanted to give you a heads up about that. So we'll share this information as well as a template press release like we've done in the past as well, um, where you're able to plug in your own information and share that template press release with your local media to let them know um, that you'll be heading to Capitol Hill to advocate for health and physical education um, and that the public in your area should know about it. All right, we know that was a lot of questions or a lot of information and I know we're over time just a little bit here, but um, Janae, do we have any burning questions over there from our participants? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, it looks like we have a couple questions. Is it too late to have others register for Speak Out Day? If not, what's the latest date we could have someone to join us? So great question. Registration is officially closed now. Um, but with that said, we still are able to probably fit in a few more people here and there. Um, we've begun scheduling already, um, which is why we do close registration so that we're able to know who's coming from where in order to be able to reach out to offices. Um, so just go ahead and email Janae if, if you have uh, another person to add to the list. Um, as, as the sooner the better, um, just so that we can really firm up um, the materials that we need and the meetings that need to be scheduled. Um, what else? Is it okay to bring my son, who is 14, year old, 14 years old, to assist in advocating? Sure, absolutely. Um, we, I know, have a few other um, younger advocates who will be joining us this year from New Mexico and Kansas. Um, so we, we'd love to have um, another student here to, to be able to really um, elevate the student voice about why it's important to them to advocate. But again, if you'll just uh, reach out to us to let us know just so that we can be prepared as far as numbers um, and everything goes, that'd be great. <clears throat> Um, another question, when we're meeting with legislators, are we meeting by ourselves or with another Shape America from the same state? Shape America member, great question. So no, we do not send anybody to a meeting by themselves. Um, it kind of depends state by state um, as far as who is registered from your state. So if there is more than one person who's coming to speak out day from your state, we will put you together in that state team um, and make sure that you're there to support each other for all of those meetings. Um, there are some states like New York where we have a really big crew, so we'll probably be splitting them up into a couple different teams, um, again, where they're able to cover, cover the most ground as possible and, and cover as many meetings as possible. Um, for those of you that are the only person uh, coming to Speak Out Day from your state, we will either pair you with likely 
someone who's coming from a neighboring state to be able to support each other in your meetings, um, or we'll have a Shape America staff person paired with you to be able to go to all your meetings as well. So, you know, if, if, you're, if you're the lead in that meeting, if you're the one person from that state, you're there to really share those personal stories about your state, and then whoever's there to support you um, can really provide those support messages about the importance of health and physical education, the data and research behind it, and help support with your asks as well. So we'll make sure that you have at least one other meeting buddy with you in all meetings. All right. Um, <clears throat> Is there a list of attendees so we know who we've paired with? We do have a list of attendees. Again, if you want to reach out to us, um, let us know what state you're from and um, who else, and, and if you're interested to see who else is coming from your state, just reach out to us and, and we can definitely share that information with you. Uh, and yes, the webinar has been recorded and will be archived and available um, for free to anyone on our Shape America Online Institute, and we'll share information as soon as it's available and archived online with you about how and when to access that. <clears throat> um, all right. We have a question here about state ESSA plans. State plans um, are being approved by the U.S. Department of Education lately. Have all of the state plans been approved to date? They have not. Um, I think as of last last time I checked, there's still 17 states that are outstanding as far as um, being approved by the Department of Ed. Um, but over the past few weeks, they've been fast and furiously um, providing feedback and approving state plans. So not all yet, um, and probably not all done by speak out day, but who knows, we'll see. Um, with that said, I think it's fair to say, Karen, that the U.S. Department of Education has been providing a lot of constructive feedback to states, um, but, but still really following congressional intent in letting states have a lot of leeway and authority as far as setting their own priorities. Um, as, as long as it complies with the legislation, setting their own priorities as far as their state ESSA plan goes. Wouldn't you say that's accurate? Yeah, that, that is very accurate. Um, Congress actually took the administration to task a little bit and um, gave them an, uh, a tutorial on flexibility within ESSA. Yep, absolutely. Um, so they're providing, you know, providing lots of feedback, but again, really just um, approving state plans as long as they are um, comply with the legislation. Um, and then should your personal stories include the specific ESSA plan initiative? Absolutely. If you're able to, to become familiar with your state ESSA plan before you come, um, see where those opportunities for health and physical education are. Um, for example, if you know that your state is using chronic absenteeism as a measure of school quality, uh, we should be sharing those messages about using health and physical education as interventions to address chronic absenteeism because we know that students that are healthier and more physically active are more likely to attend school. Um, so that's a great example and you're able to find uh, your access uh, to your state ESSA plan on our state advocacy toolkit website. Um, so this is a great question, Karen. What if the government shuts down on February 8th? Ha, huh, that is a good question. Well, then that restaurant list that I'm putting together for uh, Old Town <laughs> is going to come in handy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, typically, if the government shuts down, all the Hill staff will have somebody there um, manning the office and taking meetings. But if it shuts down, you know, there could be a lot of meetings that are canceled and we'll have to reschedule. And maybe we'll ask for a phone call, maybe we'll ask for a meeting in the district. But yes, that is a possibility. Absolutely. Yeah, it's something, yeah, we need to be aware of. Um, obviously, something we don't have any control over. Um, and again, you know, we will just be continuing up until that date to advocate for, um, you know, funding for our programs. And um, we're kind of at the mercy to see what happens. But again, as Karen said, um, 
you know, she's really monitoring day to day for us what's going on um, around appropriations. And as of right now, sounds like we're hearing another continuing resolution and we will keep you all updated, um, you know, about what we hear um, either before or on February 8th so that you're aware. All right, it looks like that's about all we have here. Um, there was one question on email addresses and here they are. Um, if you have follow-up questions, again, if you wanna know who's coming from your state or anything else that you need from us, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you'll be hearing from us many more times before you're here on February 13th and 14th with some additional information, um, background, again, that information about inviting your members of Congress to participate in the jump rope event at lunchtime, as well as that uh, template press release and others. Uh, but please don't hesitate to reach out with questions. We wanna make sure that you're fully prepared um, and, and ready to head to Capitol Hill uh, on the 14th. So with that, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, again, just as a reminder, we have recorded and we'll be archiving the webinar on the Shape America Online Institute, and we'll share with you when that's available so that you can access it. Um, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks so much, Karen, for all of your great um, tips and expertise and knowledge today. And we look forward to seeing you all in just a few short weeks. Thanks, everyone.